much. Now, dollar-denominated debt insurance by African nations and corporate enterprises continues to be supported by strong global liquidity flows in search for higher yields instrument. John De Beer, who's from Institutional Sales Africa at Standard Bank, joins us now to unpack this a little bit further. John, I understand that you attended the IMN conference currently taking place in Cape Town this morning, and you gave a little talk there. First of all, give us an overview of the conference and uh, the, the, the speech that you offered this morning. Hi, Gugu. Thank you very much. Yes, this is the 11th year of the IMN conference, which is sponsored by Standard Bank. Over the last few years, the focus of the conference has been shifting from the South African capital markets to the African capital markets. And I think this talks to the importance that Africa is now playing in the mindsets of investors internationally. Uh, no doubt that must be something new that comes to the fore. Uh, has this been a long time coming? Well, it has. It has. Um, you know, the international investment into Africa began at the beginning of the decade. Uh, the focus was mainly in the equity markets. Um, in 2007, we saw the first sovereign debt issuers issue external debts to international investors. Um, but the, the global financial crisis really put a halt to that development of that capital markets. Over the last couple of years, however, we have now seen a significant increase in sovereign issuers raising capital abroad. And this has been reflected in the liquidity that we've seen flowing, flying into Africa. Um, the conference that we attended over the last couple of days really now has a focus on Africa. Uh, and we see that by the attendees from African countries, from African issuers, and from African investors looking to understand more about the capital markets in Africa. Mm. John, just to go a little bit further with regard to that, what would you say international investors, what's their perception of Africa as an investment destination? We know that we're plagued by several issues, high unemployment rates, we've got tough regulations here in South Africa, as well as labor unrest. Absolutely, I think, Gugu, the perception of Africa is changing rapidly. There are significant challenges, of course, but the growth story that we've talked about at the conference, at previous conferences, um, is really changing the mindset of international investors. The growth story is being driven by the emerging middle class, the urbanization of Africa's rural population, the service industry that is growing to support that, and IT innovation that is really driving growth in Africa. And it's this growth story that is changing investors' perception. But I suppose the real question is, is not just the growth story, but it's the investment opportunities and investment returns that fund managers globally look to from the, off the back of this, uh, this growth that we are seeing. And it's, I suppose, evidenced best by the growth in the, in, in the Eurobond market in Africa. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we're seeing an increase in sovereign issuers looking to raise money. In 2007, there were no there were no Eurobonds in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, Ghana, Gabon, and Guaranteed Trust Bank were the first issuers in 2007. And now if we look at the universe, the investable universe, there's now 16 sovereign issuers, a raft of corporate issuers. We've seen $20 billion of capital flow into these markets over the last three years. Uh, in this year alone, $8.2 billion has flown into the capital markets via the Eurobond space. And it's this investment opportunity that is being driven by the growth story in Africa. Mm. I'd like us to dig into that matter just a little bit later, but uh, just to go into your discussion that sure. you had this morning at the IMN conference, you mentioned that global liquidity continues to support the African dollar-denominated debt sale. Unpack that for us. What, is ex what exactly does that mean for, for a lot of the emerging, market, uh, emerging economies on the African continent? Thanks very much. It's important to realize that the domestic savings base in Africa is still very, very limited. So for sovereign issuers, if they're looking to raise significant amounts of liquidity or capital, they do need to look at the international uh, bond markets. I think a good example of this was Zambia's debut bond issue last year. Zambia came to the markets to look to raise $750 million. They managed to raise over $12 billion worth of bids for their paper. Now, $12 billion is an amount that the Zambians would never be able to raise from the domestic market. So it's this liquidity that is critical to the development of the African capital markets. Um, you know, there's obviously significant factors at play that drive this liquidity, quantitative easing being one of those. And the tapering news that we are hearing at the US will put a lot of pressure on these capital markets. However, the amount of capital that African countries can raise mm. through, the, uh, through the offshore market will drive growth in infrastructure, will drive growth 
uh, in the, the power and energy sector, and it will be critical to developing these economies further. Mm. I, I like that uh, Zambian story example that you've given there, but what exactly does it take to issue a, a euro bond or, or, or a USD or US dollar bond? Uh, it must be something that's quite intensive and uh, needs proper processes and planning and infrastructure in place before one can go about this. Absolutely, absolutely. You don't go and uh, achieve $12 billion worth of bids for your paper without a proper due diligence process. The process to raise cash is a, is, is, is a it takes a long time. Um, the sovereigns work very closely with banks such as Standard Bank and our peers in order to put note programs into place to make sure that the legals are robust. Remember, these issues are done under international law, under English law, under New York law. And there is a significant documentation process that does need to be followed before the international investors can be approached to, to fundraise. Um, the, the likes of the Zambians and the Nigerians and the Ghanaians who, who have recently raised capital, they will need to go on an international roadshow to New York, to uh, Los Angeles, London, Geneva, Frankfurt, etc., to meet investors um, and to present their country to make sure that the story that they're looking to put across is understood by investors. And in, in order to achieve a successful bond issue, this is an incredibly important process. Mm. Just, on the, or just on that, apologies to interject there, John, if you will allow me to. But sure. how can uh, African borrowers maybe um, uh, try to develop new sources of demand for, for foreign direct investment as well as offshore investing? That's a good point. And I was on a panel this morning with, um, with a chap from African Bank, and I think they've been very inno innovative in terms of how do they raise capital offshore. They've done a, a number of rand denominated bond, uh, bond issues. They've done a number of dollar denominated bond issues. And they've also re very recently done a Swiss franc uh, bond issue, whereby you're attracting different pockets or pools of liquidity. So once African Bank had raised capital from South Africa, once it raised capital from the centers like New York and London, the next logical step was to look at the Swiss market where the private banks play a significant role in, uh, in those markets. So they used, they used that pocket of liquidity to raise Swiss francs. And having, a, having, having had a chat to the, uh, to the chap from African Bank, uh, as he mentioned in the, in the conference this morning, they will look at other, uh, other currencies such as the Renminbi, perhaps Sing Dollar. You know, and, and, and issuers can take a lead from that. You, know, you don't only need to look at your own domestic markets. You don't only need to look at the dollar debt market. There are pools of liquidity in, say, Australian dollars, Brazilian rei, that can be used to access capital to, mm. to fund your infrastructure, to fund your, 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 your fiscal deficit. John, it sounds like a positive story, but the unfortunate thing here is that uh, a lot of the emerging markets, the South African market we know for sure, we slaves to what happens internationally and we follow the global trends. You mentioned tapering as well as the, the, the impact that that might have on the SA market once it comes into play, which we're still uncertain about at the moment. But, but how can we balance those two, attracting the foreign direct, direct investment as well as uh, avoiding the risks associated with the movements that take place on the market internationally? Absolutely. Africa is not immune from what happens internationally. We've seen over the last couple of years the impact that the Euro debt crisis has had on our markets, the quantitative easing that has provided a, a flood of liquidity, um, the tapering news that began in June, and we've seen how our asset prices in, in the debt space has reacted to that. And it is very important to be aware of the risk on and risk off sentiment that flows around these sort of news, these news stories. And issuers need to be very careful on when they come to the market. To come t to raise capital in a so-called risk-off environment will make the cost of your borrowing significantly higher. So you look for opportunities for windows when there's a lot of good news stories out there, when investors are looking to put money to work in order to tap these markets. The tapering news, again, is a, is a very good case in point, whereby J June, July, we saw asset prices sell off, we saw yields rising, and hence we saw very little issuance by, uh, by African and by emerging market uh, borrowers. Now that the tapering news or the tapering effect looks like it's going to be pushed out to Q1 next year, we're seeing issues come back to the market. We saw Mozambique come with a, with a proxy sovereign bond issue. Um, there's news that GTB is looking, the Guaranteed Trust Bank is looking to issue uh, next week. Um, these rumors of Ke that Kenya will come in the next, in the next short while. So whilst external factors like tapering, 
will definitely play an impact on our markets. It's managing your timings around borrowing money that is very, very critical. Mm -hmm. John, before we let you go, uh, you mentioned some of the, the, the sweet spots, or rather the good news stories with regard to uh, some countries that are really taking heed of foreign direct investment, Ghana, Zambia, as well as Mozambique. But uh, is South Africa taking advantage of the situation at the moment? Absolutely. South Africa and our parastatals have been long-term issuers into the international market. South Africa has a, a, a long yield curve. We've got a number of international bonds out there. Transnet uh, has borrowed significantly. The likes of ESCOM has. And again, it, it comes down to timing. And uh, I expect the South Africans to continue raising capital international markets. It is a viable source of funding, and it is a great diversifier for the South African funding base um, and enables us to borrow from these markets in a very similar fashion to our international peers, the likes of Turkey, the likes of Mexico, uh, Poland, Russia. Um, and, and South Africa will remain active in this market.